table over by the front door. We do have some um, meeting agendas if you would like to follow along. We also have some listening devices if you are in need of those. And, uh, there's also some request to speak forms. Uh, you've asked uh, if you were willing to speak on an item that is on the agenda, that you please fill one of those out. And Mr. Clark over here, and uh, he's the city the city clerk. And you would just remind you that you will have a three minute to speak on that. And also, if you wouldn't mind making sure that all your mobile devices are silenced, I would appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and move along to the uh, dedication of the pledge. Today we have Pastor Mike Watkins from the Friendship Church. Pastor, of the agenda. I'd like to go ahead and add an item 8A. That would be an item 8A. And that is an update on the budget calendar. Update of the budget calendar item 8A. That's the only change we have to sign. I'll make a motion to approve for that change. Just for clarification, I see that we have to have 8 under old business. You want to agree old business to have 8A? Correct. Okay, thank you. I see. Second. 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 We have a motion and a second. Susie, did you get that second? Uh, two. Two. Okay, well. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 5 0. We move on to swearing in by C. Attorney. Oh, sorry. We're going to move on to proclamations and presentations. Tab 2. The very Chamber of Commerce update. Chief Scott Berry. Good afternoon, Council. Chief Scott Berry, the Executive Director of Tiberius Chamber of Commerce. Hopefully, you have my report. Uh, just to touch on a few things. Uh, one, I announced last month to you that we are in a membership drive competition with Leesburg. And my little sources tell me we're winning. So we got to keep it up, though. It goes to July 31st. Uh, currently, we have had 12 new members in the month of May. That's the largest we've ever done in a single month. So we're very excited about this. Uh, and I hope that if any of you know of any businesses, encourage them to join, especially now in the next few months. A couple of upcoming events that are really, uh, I think, unique and important to point out. Uh, tomorrow night at Hemingway's, we are doing an event called Dirt to Drinks, and it is an event for the construction and growth industry, for people that um, are contractors, handymen, uh, anybody who, uh, roofers, plumbers, electricians, to try to form a network that has not been done in Lake County uh, through any of the chambers. I know we've had a lot of them join recently, so we're trying to build upon that, maybe have some, some real impact then with, the, with that group and give that group a voice uh, in, in our community. And then you see the rest of the big events coming up. The last one, the last two I want to point out, June 26th, another new event, and I'm hoping will be a continual event every other month or at least once a quarter, called Pints and Politics. And this will be an intimate group exclusive to Tavir's Chamber members to have one-on-one -on -one conversations or in a comfortable town hall type meeting, but very casual, not formal, uh, just to chill out after hours with the elected representative and have some face time. Have some face time. Ask questions that you might not get to ask normally. Have a chance to hear what's going on, have an update. And we're going to start with the chair of the county commission, Leslie Camp Young. I'm hoping that maybe the next one we can do our mayor and then move on from there, maybe somebody from the school board, that type of thing. Just a one on one, a neat uh, opportunity. And that is uh, the first one of those is June 26th. And then last, you'll hear about this for, for a couple more months um, our big teacher appreciation luncheon that we do when the teachers go back to school. That is on August 7th. We'd like to have any of you be there, uh, help hand out goodie bags, if anybody wants to be a sponsor, be part of that uh, teacher and staff appreciation luncheon. It's a big, big deal, big event, and we need a lot of help for it and a lot of sponsors. Um, our teachers really deserve it because we have some of the best schools in Tavares, in Lake County, here in Tavares. So, any questions? I, I just got a couple. For this uh, Pines and Politics, it's only one elected official there, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, so the rest of us got to stay away. Well, you all can come to this one because it is a county commission one, but my understanding is that when the mayor or somebody from the city council is the guest, then the rest of you have to stay away. Am I, am I correct in believing that? But this is the county one, so it's open. Yeah, I think the, our attorney can speak more of the legal aspects, but 
if the general rule of thumb is that two or more council members can't talk about an item that may come up at a upcoming city council meeting. Right, but the, the, so it's not the presence, it's the discussion that is, uh, that is the law. But absolutely. But that's what, what, what my point is, this first one is just Leslie up there. She's the only one answering questions or talking to the crowd. So if any of you are there just to listen and hear what's going on, I believe that would be my group. Yep. Yes, okay. because you're not being asked, well, what about Tavares? That's where I, the moderator, will step in and say, they're not the guests and we don't do that because it's uh, the, the rules. And they'll be the next month, that type of thing. Is that clear that? That's good enough. And the second question I have is, is how many total members do you have now? 282 members. How many did you start with? Three years ago, I started with 200 members. 200 no, members. actually under 200. It was under 200. It was 150, and then we've had some drop-offs since then. We've had, since I've been here, we have added almost 200 members in three years. Yes. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Along that same line, uh, can you tell us about how many members you've had at the uh, past couple of uh, lunches? Oh, our lunches are doing great. Uh, we are running right at 100 people. Uh, but again, when I started, I'm not trying to brag, the average attendance was 40, and our average attendance right now is 98. That's our average for this year. Uh, we are running over 100 at most of them. Yeah, it's been great. You know, it's great. Nice. a lot of those, and uh, just to see the growth and uh, all the business community that's come in, it's, uh, it's wonderful. So, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <coughs> uh, Mr. Williams, as far as uh, when the mayor goes to that, if the mayor, if the mayor goes to the Mines and Politics, are we allowed to attend? Sure. You can attend, you just can't discuss. Yes, sir. If the mayor can talk about what's going on in the city and what he thinks about things, but he can't engage in discourse with you all, he, he can't make a decision or communicate with each other about matters that are possibly going to come to the city. Yes, sir. Yes, and that um, discussions really haven't been made on as far as that, so that's not something that, that's necessarily in the works right now. It's still a discussion stage. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to swearing in by city attorney and disclosure of ex parte communication. There are no quasi judicial matters on the agenda today. <coughs> Reading of all ordinance resolutions into the record. Thank you, Mayor. One resolution, 2019 a resolution of the City of Tavares, the County of Lake, the State of Florida, supporting the State Road 50 realignment project in downtown Brooklyn as the number one Lake County transportation priority for funds through the Florida Department of Transportation, as prioritized by the Lake Sumter Metropolitan Planning Organization. And we have two ordinances at first reading. Ordinance 2019-12 and ordinance of the City of Tavares, Florida, rezoning approximately 1.67 acres of property generally located west of Door Avenue and North Old US 441 from residential multifamily organizing to commercial C1, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tavares Council, providing for an effective date, and ordinance 2019-13, and ordinance of the City of Tavares, Florida, amending the Tavares Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map, 2020 providing for a change of future land use designation on approximately 1.67 acres of property generally located west of Dora Avenue, North of Old US 441, from high density residential to commercial, providing for several building complex, providing for transmittal, and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Moving on to uh, the consent agenda. Um, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to me? That we have to speak to me? There's a second one that sits in so I guess there's anybody in the audience that wants to speak to me. Let's uh, we're move on to resolutions. Tab 3. Resolution 2019-23 State Road 50 Realignment Project. Mr. Murray. The uh, Groveland City Manager has asked um, all cities to support a resolution to remove the state road from going through the middle of their downtown uh, to outside their downtown uh, and ask if we would pass a resolution supporting it so we put it in the application and wait when they go for the MPL and state for funding for that. I asked their uh, planner, uh, TJ Fish, 
uh, if it competed with any of the funding that the city of Aries is uh, going after. Uh, and he wrote a letter in your package which effectively says no, that the um, funds that they are securing for a state road relocation is a different pot of money than the funds we're securing for the trail between downtown Tiberias and downtown uh, Mount Dora. Uh, so I included a map of their proposed plan that shows the relocation of State Road 50 outside their downtown corridor. Um, and uh, effectively said we as a city may be asking for their support someday on a project that is a uh, regional impact in Lake County, uh, which I'm sure they would uh, reciprocate um, in the future should we require that. So therefore, I'm recommending that we approve this resolution and send it to the uh, city manager program. That's all I have. Council, any questions? Uh, yeah, well, I would just like to uh, tell the council that I did call down to the city of Berlin and find out what their city council members voted on this. And it was a 5 0 vote to approve the moving of 50 or rather downtown. So if the city of Groveland is certain to do with it, I am certainly good with it. So I'd like to make a motion that we, we approve resolution 2019 on 3. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a motion to second. Uh, we'll open it up for discussion. <coughs> uh, any more discussion? Uh, I just wanted to, to point out that this was brought at our last MPO meeting. Mayor did speak at the uh, NPO meeting and uh, was asking for city support on this. And I'm just glad to see that you know, this does not compete with any of our funding projects that they will you know, support us as we down the road with our uh, category of trail uh, that we've got for us. Um, so, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes 5 0. Move to ordinance and public hearing. Uh, first reading, first readings are read into the record by the clerk, so as to place all interested parties on notice that a quasi-judicial procedure and actionable item is coming before the council at a second reading. And at the second reading, the city council will receive public input and testimony from the applicant and then it may take action. Therefore, neither discussion nor testimony is received at first reading. Let's see if we do not have anything on second reading. Move on to general government. Tab six, the award of a contract for CDBG for Monte Alleyway resurfacing project of the works. Thank you, Mayor. Effective March 1, 2019, an unmatched community development block grant, CDBG, was awarded by Lake County to the City of Tiberias in the amount of $202,100 for the resurfacing of one large block of Memorial. It spans from East Gibbons Street to East Esther Street. The City received two bids, Florida Safety, $289,320, Atlantic Civil, $211,264.50. We have uh, two options to award the contract or do not award the contract. The city engineer has uh, recommended to award the contract to Atlantic Civil. Uh, fiscal impact is $202,000, $202,100 for community development block grant, non-matching funds, $9,164.53 to be paid out of the streets division capital payment. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do you have any questions, Mr. Dillon? How much money is left in the capital fund, three division capital fund? If you take out the nine thousand, you have one hundred seventy thousand eight hundred thirty-six dollars and fifty-three cents. Okay. Oh, that's right. I have a question. Do we have a? I know we have uh, for our roads, we have a priority list. Do we have a priority list for our highways? We do. And it's similar to our pavement management index. Um, we take a look at roads that are really bad that just pertain to dirt. That would be a high priority for the city to resurface. Then we go to asphalt for alleyways and then brick papers. And this alleyway is dirt. dirt. And I believe the attachment reflects that as well. There are several pictures in the attachment. It's also highly used by the elementary kids. Yes. <coughs> Council, any other questions? Are you going to move on this? I'll move to approve a second. We have a motion to second. Any more discussion?
discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, 5-0. Moving on to tab 7, Performing Arts, Referendum Language, Mr. Brewery. Previously, the council requested that the development and funding of the Performing Arts Council be decided by the voters up to varies by referendum election at this November's uh, election. Staff seeks authorization from council to have the city attorney and bond council work with the city clerk to develop a bond referendum resolution for council's consideration and approval at the next meeting for the following language. And correct me, uh, councilor, is it two readings or one reading? Okay, so you'll come back for first reading, and then you would come back for second reading, and that's when you would actually take the action. The approval would be at the second meeting. The title would be Bonds for Designing, uh, Permitting, Constructing, and Operating a Performing Arts Center and Associated Parking Garage in the City of Tavares. What you're voting on, what voters are voting on to enhance the quality of life, improve economic conditions by constructing and operating a performing arts center and associated parking garage. Shall the city issue bonds not exceeding 27 million at an interest rate of not exceeding the legal maximum and maturing in 20 years or less by levying ad or taxes in the amount sufficient to repay such bonds? What we're looking for is your approval of this language so that the city attorney bond council can develop a resolution with that language, bring it back to you for two readings and approve it and then send it over to the supervisor of elections to be at the November election on the ballot. City Attorney and I are going to ask questions. Council, do you have any questions? I, I do. I do have questions. In the title in the bolded area, or the bolded type, it says bonds for designing, permitting, constructing, and operating. But in the body of what the referendum resolution would be, uh, first line, improve economic conditions by constructing and operating. So just in my brain, constructing and operating seems a lot clearer than designing, permitting, constructing and operating. I wonder if the title is too wordy, and I'm just throwing that out there for if anyone else noticed that. Uh, truly, designing and permitting as a subcategory of construction, would it clean it up and make it easier for folks to read it uh, when they're considering it if we drop the designing and permitting from the title and the bold print? I don't think, from a policy perspective, I would have an issue removing the word designing, permitting, those two words. Um, but from a legal perspective, I think that would be okay, correct? I don't think it matters. Yeah. Yeah, the title has to give you fair notice about what the substance of the question is, and I think it probably does without those words. I think constructing and operating is broad enough to include permitting and designing. And I disagree 100%. Because when you talk about a construction project, you have to have your design, you have to have your permit, you have to have your construction. You've got to have those. So if we take out those first two words, then it would be, well, maybe we get the money for design and permitting from somewhere else. I want those words in there so it's bound hard to design, permit, construct, and operate in performance. That's what it's for me if it matters to you, that I'm okay with it. I have one other question I wanted to throw out uh, just to see uh, everybody's reaction, and I don't know if it's going to be poor or not, but I hope it's not. Please don't hit me. What if we ask the question such that people had an alternative to either do the Performing Arts Center and the garage, just the garage, or nothing at all? It, is that something, and I'm just throwing it out there for council's discussion, is that something that you know, <laughs> I mean, well, I'm Sorry, we missed that. Do that again. Open, I'm really not. And, and, uh, I just wonder, if would that be fair, <laughs> or is it better to leave it as an all or nothing? When I was considering this, uh, one of the things I considered is you you could kind of split the vote, you know, for folks. Uh, when I started playing around with the numbers based upon, you know, if a thousand people vote, and I played out, out different scenarios with it, you could truly kind of split the vote and, and have the majority of the people say, I want a parking garage, I want a performing arts center and a parking garage, but uh, 
those two combined would be successful, but because you're splitting the vote there, they could wind up being less than the folks that said just flat out no. So then you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot and then you're flying the ointment. But I wanted to throw it out there. If someone has an argument for why that's a bad idea, I'll let it go right now. It's probably a good idea, but we can't do it. It's a single subject question, so you can't ask a multiple, you can't ask a multiple choice question on the ballot. We have, if you have three different ballots, you can say, do you want this, number one, do you want this, number two, do you want this, number three, but we can't give them a selection on the single subject. Yes, that was the only question I missed on my constitutional law exam. <laughs> I'll, I'll let it go. I'm done. All right. I, I, have a, I, I have a question concerning the, uh, the language. And I'll make a couple assumptions. I want to make sure I'm right. We're not giving them a definite on the millage rate or what it could or couldn't be. But we do not know if it's going to be $27 million or $24 million. And we do not know what the interest rate will be, which would impact all of that, correct? Um, it will um, it will not be more than twenty-seven million, and you are correct. The interest rate um, will be the market interest rate at the time. So we don't know that, so we can't put what the lowest rate would be. Correct. At the time. Okay. Okay. Council, do you have any other questions? I would you like to move on this. Make a motion to approve the language. I second it. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 5 0. Now we're going to move on to new business. Does anyone have any new business? No, no new business. We're going to move on to old business. Uh, tab 8. Department Arts Center, Financial Follow-up Information, Mr. Brewery. Previous City Council Member Smith requested budget numbers, both revenues and expenses, of the Mount Dora and Claremont Performing Arts Center, as well as the tax impact on homesteaded, non-homesteaded, and businesses for the estimated $27 million proposed Performing Arts Center and parking garage. Staff was not able to obtain breakout numbers for the Mount Dora Performing Arts Center. Thus, in its place, staff obtained budgets for a similar size 600 seat Performing Arts Center in Central Florida, the Ormond Beach Performing Arts Center, as well as the Claremont Performing Arts Center. I've attached those budgets for both those cities' departments in your backup material. As a rule of thumb, staff, your city administrator, is of the opinion that performing arts center revenues are plus or minus 50% of the cost to operate and maintain, and therefore require a 50% annual contribution from the municipality, depending upon how creative the municipality is in obtaining private sector contributions, like naming rights multi-use events in the midweek for conventions, renting out space for artists and writer clinics, TED Talks events, college seminars, comic relief programs, high school graduations. So if you're strictly performing arts, you're probably going to require a little bit more than 50% contribution from the taxpayer annually. If you're doing all sorts of creative um, uh, things in your, in your center, uh, you're probably a little less. And that's reflected, I think, on the two budgets that you were presented. The Ormond Beach one requires less than a 50% contribution from the taxpayer. The one from Claremont requires more. A little difference there. Claremont's only two years old. Ormond Beach is a lot older. And so there's a little bit of, you know, how long you've been in business uh, as well. Uh, as it relates to the tax impact, the public communications director is developing a plug and play portal on the city's website where a taxpayer will be able to input their property information, whether it's non homestead, homesteaded, or commercial, and receive the exact tax that they would be paying for 
their fair share of that bond issue. That should be done in the next 60 days, well before uh, the time to vote. Uh, in the meantime, finance director, and I've handed this out to you, has given you a random house, and I'll share that with you, and a random business valued. So if you have a homesteaded home at $150,000 of assessed value, for this, uh, you would, for this bond, $27 million bond issue, you would pay $228.32 a year, 18, or 18, which equates to $18.36 a month, or $0.60 cents per day. Non homesteaded home value at 150000 is $330 a year, $220 or $27, but of course, a month, or $0.91 cents a day. A business valued at $250,000 would pay about $550 a year, $45 a month, or $1.51 a day. So, in about 30 or 60 days, you'll be able to plug in, instead of $150,000, you plug in your home or your business, and it will spit out um, and calculate for you your yearly, monthly, and uh, daily costs. Uh, so, so Council Member Smith has asked for, you know, what is the annual subsidy for a performing arts center, and what is the impact on uh, the voters and the taxpayers for the bond issue, and I think I've provided that. Um, I, I look at the cost of a performing arts center into sort of three big chunks, just to kind of summarize this. One is the issuance of the bond, the uh, cost to construct it. And uh, that is a bond issue that runs about 19 or 20 years, and then it ends in total. Work. That cost... Uh, is paid for by the uh, taxpayers through ad valorem property taxes with a millage of the appropriate amount. So you've got the cost of construction as one cost. Then you have the cost of construction, of, of operating, maintaining, and then you have the performances. So those are the three costs. The, the, the cost of construction is bared by the taxpayer. Operations cost is usually uh, uh, bared by the taxpayer, and then the actual performances are paid for by the ticket holders. So if you have a tribute band or the journey tribute band or a, a, a performance, uh, there's a cost for that. Let's say it's $30,000 to put on that performance. Uh, that's a privately operated um, venue that's being offered to the public. The ticket holders buy the tickets, and the tickets pay for the cost of putting that show on. The cost to uh, do the custodial services, pay the electric bill, the utility bills, wash the windows, mow the grass, manage the facility, those generally are run by the municipality. And I, and I think uh, something to equate it to might be uh, the cost of running ball fields. So the community will pay for the ball fields, but you might have a um, Bay Ruth program. Bay Ruth program will charge uh, the parents uh, and kids to, to be in it. And that uh, revenue pays for the umpires and the shirts. It's not paid for the lights, the mowing of the ball fields, or the fertilizer, or the management of it. Um, if you like a library, Taxpayers pay for the library, operations, and maintenance, but when uh, somebody comes there to do um, a piece about their books or uh, their poetry, you usually pay $10 to see that, and that's between the ticket holder and the operator. Performing arts, similar in my view. Um, there's a cost to build a library or ball field for a performing arts center. Uh, usually bonds are issued for that, uh, and the taxpayer for that. There's a cost to operate and maintain the library, the law fields, the Foreign Arts Center, the tax credit for that. And then people go there and 
use the facilities, use the ticket holders, pay for whatever the event is. So I just wanted to kind of share my thinking on performing arts center costs. Three silos, two of which the taxpayers contribute to, one of which is a private uh, arrangement between ticket holders and performers. Uh, I think we've provided you what you're looking for, and we're here to answer any additional questions you may have. I don't have any questions. I just want to uh, give you my appreciation for doing this. I know it was a little more than what you normally would have done, but at least now we have solid facts that we can drop and tell people about this whole project. So thank you for that. I just want to point out to, um, you know, like you said, uh, Mr. O'Keefe is working on the plug and play. I think that's a great thing. That way, each individual resident can go online and know exactly what they're going to be paying. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, I know one thing I did see um, when you have the 4% interest rate now, that can change just a little bit. So, I mean, it won't be an exact figure, but we can guesstimate on what the interest rate will be. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is correct. The interest rate might be um, a little bit less than 4%. So I think this is going to be your worst case scenario based on where the bond market is today and will be for the next year. Yeah, that way the uh, voters can make an informed decision on what this can cause each, each one of them and uh, they, can, uh, they can decide by, by going through that post market at this point. So thank you very much for putting that together. All right, any other questions on this? I don't think we need to vote on this as to this information. Is that correct? This is uh, all a mask question. Mr. Drury, you were talking about the three silos and the taxpayers, the citizens of Tiberias will pay for silo number one to build the Performing Arts Center. Silo number two is maintaining and cutting the grass, washing the windows. Can you speak to or give us any type of projections on what you would estimate? If we put those numbers, the maintenance that's going to go on uh, forever, essentially, uh, what would those numbers be? Do you have a sense of what you would project that cost to be? Yeah, I can give you my thoughts on what that could be. Um, I would uh, estimate that the cost to operate and maintain the facility for the electric bills and all that would be about 500000 a year. And so that would be a quarter of what you see here. So let's take a homesteaded $150,000 home. Um, Right now it shows about twenty bucks, eighteen dollars and thirty-six cents. So you're gonna pay eighteen dollars and thirty-six cents for the bond issue, and you will probably pay around four dollars and seventy cents for the continued operations and maintenance a month. Fifty bucks a year. About uh, yeah, about fifty dollars a year. No other questions? All right. We're going to move on to tab 8A. We have a change uh, in just one of the budget kickoff meetings. Instead of kicking off on um, June 19th, we're going to kick it off on July the 3rd, the day before um, the July 4th. Uh, and that was to meet the scheduling of everyone's schedule. So the, the first delivery of the budget for next year will come to you on July the 3rd. You'll be getting your books before then, but the meeting in which we deliver the budget will be July the 3rd. And we've updated the calendar. It's enclosed. Uh, uh, we we'll give you the updated calendar. Uh, the rest remains uh, pretty much the same. We have one special meeting, which we've already told you about to set the tentative maximum millage rate, and that is on July 24th. July 24th. So there are three meetings in July. Correct. Two budget meetings. Correct. A maximum tentative millage rate meeting. Correct. Uh, on the third, fourth, fourth, fourth Wednesday of the month. Something like that. On Wednesday. Yeah, July 24th. July 24th. And then um, after that, we go into budget meet, uh, more budget meetings in August and September. Do you have any questions on this? No. Okay. We're going to move on to.
to this door we still got old business. We were all old business. I'm sorry, my apologies. Any other old business? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I brought up the council about putting up uh, crossing signs at the corners of Texas and Alfred and Texas and Caroline. And it was suggested that we try to use, and I suggested flashing signs, and it was suggested that we try to use non-flashing signs. So John has some examples up here.
entrepreneurs, and other community-spirited folk kept pressing for more and better transportation and home and farm development for newcomers. Cattle, citrus, lumber, naval stores, and farm produce industries helped move this area into what was to be a boom-bust economy of the Roaring Twenties. Rail transport brought the means to move products rapidly into Atlantic and Gulf ports. Trade flourished. Passenger train service blossomed along with higher volumes of freight. And these services grew until roadways and airways brought newcomers. Automobiles, trucks, buses, and airplanes. Rail passenger services waned markedly in the 1950s. The Mount Dora, Tiberias, and Eustis Railroad returns the historical nature and fun of riding steam-powered trains with an eye toward regular service to Orlando in addition to excursions within the area. Rails will shine from action in Lake County. The whistle will be heard again. Drive safely. Thank you, Ms. Burling. We want the audience to be heard. The audience, yes. State your name and uh, address. Who's that? Three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, my name is Robert Wolf. I live at 1308 Lakeshore Boulevard here in Terrence. Uh, Mr. Smith. We're talking about the, the flashing lights for the caution. I understand the kids going across at Texas and Alfred. 100 feet to the west, there's a stoplight where the kids come. They, they come out of the parking garage where they're parking. They can go right through there. And there's, you know, it's already has a light. So I understand the kids' safety. It's a great thing. But we already have, you know, process in place for where they can cross with a light, you know, so that's all I'm saying. It saves $15,000 throughout three entities, you know, that's 5000 a pop, they can go somewhere else. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Wolf. Anyone else? Good afternoon, I'm Ed Joachim, all right, Fiscal Rangers, uh, Carl, just a couple quick things. Uh, one is that you may have seen in the Sunday paper, followed by Lauren Ritchie, talking about the need for cities to video their meetings. So I thought I would just repeat my mantra that I've had before, which is uh, hopefully it will work its way into the budget. Now one of the problems I recognize and that aggravates me no end is that these ADA lawsuits have drastically increased the cost because now you have to have captioning. That's why Mount Dora stopped doing videos. They were using just a cell phone. And they stopped in the middle of last year. And uh, Lauren got some estimates from a couple cities, and they're talking like $70,000. And remember, before this came up, you had an estimate of about 10000 So I would uh, hope that uh, you do start. I really think the League of Cities and the city should all get together and come up with some sort of a group plan on getting a deal on the specialized software, whatever you need to reduce the cost. Uh, and then secondly, just that I'm old enough that I remember when you're talking about performing art centers, back in let's see, the 60s or early 70s, uh, that the, the Sydney Opera House was a national debate in there, and it was $90 million. <coughs> And it came out to the population at the time, it came out to about $6 per person. And that was $19.60. <laughs> so, uh, just uh, thought, thought I'd put a little perspective in that. Uh, and so, this is probably a bit cheaper than that was in those dollars. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yogan. Anyone else? All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to <coughs> reports. It's the administrator. Nothing to add today?
It's around the board. That's all I have. Nothing there, thank you. And Chief, I see you back there. Do you have anything? For the back of the audience. June 14th. June 14th. June 14th. June 14th. June 14th. So, June 14th is rapidly approaching. There was a change, and I thought Sherry might be here to, to talk about that change. We had originally put that on the afternoon, and uh, uh, Vice Mayor, I think back when we first mentioned about using June 14th as the date, you said, well, that's a long way away, and here it is like nine days away, so, oh, the calendar's killing us. Um, but we are still on June the 14th, but because of the heat that we're experiencing in afternoon weather patterns, we just thought as staff that it would make more sense to move it to the morning. So Sherry's working on a, has created this beautiful uh, um, flyer, and Mr. Drury, she put red doors on it. It's, I don't know how she did that, but that's pretty incredible. So we we are moving that grand opening up until 10 to 10 o'clock in the morning. And we apologize, I hope that works in your schedules, because we still want to, uh, we need you all there. Uh, you're, you're a huge part of this grand opening. And I can tell you, we're not going to be, you might be stepping on a couple of nails or stepping over some uh, extension cords. It's okay. We're going to cut the ribbon on what we have, and you will be so proud and so amazed of that building. Most of you have seen it already, but if you haven't, and for audience members, uh, prepare to be amazed. So that's all I have. Just looking forward to seeing you out there on June the 14th, Flag Day, 10 o'clock in the morning, not 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Any questions? Thank you. The time change is good. Yeah, it's been pretty hot. It's pretty hot in the afternoon. Yeah, it's pretty hot too. Hot in the morning too. Yeah. We're, yeah. 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 We'll muscle through. We'll push through that. So yeah, so looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mr. Williams. Well, I think if you, if you had not twisted your wrist on, you might have set a record for the shortest meeting, but uh, I think you lost. <laughs> I had like 37, 35 minutes once. Uh, yeah, thank you all very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Stevenson. Um, Mr. Rogers, I'm assuming you're the one that put this book together with all the cool events. That It's thick. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's very, I've really enjoyed going through this uh, book. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to you. I'm going to carry this around with me. And it, it's it. the staff. I'll tell you their name. All right. Yes, ma'am. It's really cool. Thanks. Uh, that's everything I have. Councilor Smith. Can't wait for the uh, premium cutting chief. I know you worked hard on it. The guys that were building it worked real hard. And, uh, just, it's exciting. You know, I, I can't wait for the guys to finally get into the new station. So, um, on this day, in 1968, Robert F. Kennedy was shot. And it just so happens that today is National Moonshine Day. So, that's all I have, Mary. That's all I have. Yesterday was the 100th anniversary of women having the right to vote to that school. So, I thought I'd share that part of the fact. Otherwise, I'd I have nothing. And the only thing I have is, uh, Mr. Rogers, I think all the council members got their uh, community events finder. I've always said the city of Perry has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Mr. Rogers put together this uh, event binder with um, all the events that we've had in the past year. Tell you what, when you start looking at everything like that, the city of Perry really does a lot of stuff. So I thank you for putting that together. Uh, Really interesting, so maybe we can leave Willie's out for people to, to look at and enjoy. Thanks a lot for putting that together. Looking forward to the uh, ribbon cutting and happy Father's Day, all the fathers out there. Uh, we will see you at the next meeting. So, uh, see you getting further. This meeting is adjourned.